Alright people, it's that time of the month again. Time to head down to the Larimer Lounge for their exciting local 303 event. You know what's going on. I'm going to be asking some bands, artists, musicians, some interesting questions. If they answer all five of them, then they win a free copy of my mixtape, Nick Cicada's Greatest Hits. Let's get into the action. Asking interesting questions. Asking interesting questions. Asking interesting questions. Asking interesting questions. We are here with... Galavina. I'm Alex from Mood Lighting. DJ Illumination. Unlimited Data. Uh, my name is Kanan LeBron. I'm Ally. And we are Unlimited. Unlimited Data. Soy Celeste. Immigrant's Child. All right. Question one. Do you take a different approach between performing in the studio and performing live? We're working on it, and yes, we do. We, we totally do. Uh, how so? Uh, well, when we perform, we just we rock our tracks live, sometimes with lyrics, sometimes without, just depending on the sound in the, in the venue. Um, but from the studio to our live performances, uh, it's definitely a huge difference. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Okay. My biggest takeaway on that is that <clears throat> when we're recording in the studio, you're always making up for or anticipating your ad-libs and your backup tracks and things like that what it's going to sound like at the finished product when you have a little bit of digital help, if you will, right? When you're performing live on stage, the approach is know your stuff, um, be able to do things on the fly just in case something changes, right. and uh, try not to yell into the microphone, right? Yeah, I think so. I think when we're in the studio, um, we're not focusing as much on like physical performance or moving around on stage, we're trying to like really focus and zone in on mm -hmm. um, perfecting the art that we're creating, so it's always going to be a little different. I guess the main difference is that when you're playing live, you draw from the energy that you get from the crowd, as opposed to kind of that natural drive or that self-inspiration that you get inside of the studio. So that I, I would say that's the main difference, but as far as my approach and like intensity or even engagement with the music, I, I say it would stay about the same. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that the, di the main differences for me between the studio and live is like live is a full ex a full sensory experience, you know? Right. Like people are able to really interact with you and you can also feed off the energy of the audience. And for myself too, I always try to create my live shows to be slightly different and even the recordings that I make, so there's like variation. In there's like exclusivity ways. to it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. How, how so? <laughs> um, I mean, in the studio, we pretty much track everything. We kind of write the songs as we track, so um, it's like overlaying a million parts. When we play live, you know, there's only so many of us, so we have to just have one part and stick to it, so yeah. Mm. That's a good question. Question two, what basic equipment would you recommend for any aspiring musician? Well, it really depends on your instrument and what you're most interested in, but I think doing just like the minimal research of what you need and just going for it, even if it's used equipment, is the way to go. I know that's true for me and when I started with electric guitar, I was like, okay, what is like something I can start out with because maybe this isn't going to gel. Maybe I am more of an acoustic player. Maybe I do want to like stick more to piano and keyboard. But I'm glad that I did that. You know, I like uh -huh. looked around and found a good deal and just like went for it and started to play around. So I think like that's true with like a lot of different equipment because it can be really costly, but there are lots of good deals that you can find for used equipment right. um, and make it happen. Um, probably just like a audio interface, like a Focusrite, Scarlett, um, yeah, that's how I got into recording and I think that it's like, pretty much anyone would benefit from being able to record their own stuff in some capacity. And download some audio type software? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, I started with the free version of Ableton and then went from there, um, but I mean, Reaper is another great one to start with. Honestly, just whatever instrument you're trying to play and something that you can hear yourself in. I yeah. think that's all you need to get started. Like. You're playing guitar, just a guitar and an amp, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, that's all you need to get really get started. And you know, as you start getting more advanced and you know, doing uh, more and more with your instrument, then you can start getting more stuff. But really, that's all you really need. Like even just starting off with an acoustic guitar is all you really need to yeah. get started. Yeah. Or bass or whatever it is. Or whatever instrument yeah. you have, yeah. I'm a guitarist and, and a singer in the band, so 
uh, it's indes indispensable to have a, a good guitar, a, the best guitar you can afford, honestly. Right. I would say in terms of instruments, guitar is one of those instruments that does pay off to have a better instrument. Doesn't mean you can't learn on a, on a budget guitar, but when you're gonna start off, I would recommend to get the best guitar you can possibly afford. Again, that's relative. You can There's a lot of great deals online or even at a pawn shop where you can find really good instruments. And a vocal mic, definitely. I, I would say the earlier I would have learned that in my career to have carry my own vocal mic and mm -hmm. have the best, again, vocal mic you can afford is the best. Is a lot of venues don't have a really good vocal mic, especially starting out. Anything you can get your hands on at first, anything, doesn't matter. Don't. You don't need a million dollar studio to make a million dollar record, just Blaze said that. I used to think you had to be in big studios to make great records, you don't. I mean, it helps, but my advice is go for it. There's no such thing as perfection. Perfection is the enemy of production. For me, I, I, I feel like the most important thing that you could have, that you could get your hands on is, is a good creative element to be around. Right. All right. Whether it's your team or your surroundings, writing inside of a box is tough. It's not impossible, but when you can really get out and, and vibe in the atmosphere that you want to be creative mm -hmm. in, you'd be surprised. Um, well, Question three, has your sound evolved over time? Definitely. The band started as an acoustic trio. It was an um, acoustic guitar and two um, hand percussionists. From there, I mean, the most recent lineup for our newest album, there was eight people on stage. We have a full horn section, a violin player, piano. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it's definitely grown over the years. Kind, kind of an orchestral effect? For sure, and, and a funk effect, I guess, also. Oh. Uh, what's the band called and what's the uh, new album called? The band's name is Iskali. Uh -huh. uh, our newest album was released this year. It's called Rebirth. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the, this band hasn't been active for um, a super long time, but even in that time, we've um, I guess diversified the sound a little bit. Um, we, you know, started out really trying to do like straight ahead rock, and um, we're getting a little more indulgent with it, and also doing some post punk kind of stuff now. So. Yes, I would definitely say that it has evolved over time. I like to play with a lot of different types of genres, but with this current solo project, I would say that I'm a lot more varied in the different styles of rock that I do, as opposed to my last music project that was kind of more um, in, in just a punk style. Um, overall. Which subgenres do you uh, explore in the new project? I like to play around with um, punk still, of course, but also alternative, um, looking to more kind of classic rock sounds, mm. um, looking to various like feminist um, rock influences as well. Just hearing a lot from even metal and other types of rock that I don't necessarily play, but and hearing how to like play around with the structure of songs mm -hmm. and different parts like that. So, you know, also looking to some of the classic bands like Queen or Elton John um, and incorporating some of that ballad energy and bringing piano Ooh. back in that way. Trying That's been really fun. Diversify your influences. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, we've evolved a lot. Well, for me, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little older. I'm from a, you know, previous generation. When I was younger, a lot of the songs were reflective of what I was doing at the time. So there was a lot more of a street, kind of a, uh, a, a troublesome element to it, right? Le leaning more towards that, that gangsta type stuff and everything. And, and as I evolved as a person, you gotta allow yourself to evolve with your music. You know, um, now I teach safety courses for OSHA and I'm a softball dad. Oh. So how do you then reinvent yourself? I can't keep writing from the heart if I'm not really out there doing that kind of trapping and stuff like that. Right. So being true to yourself and what you're what you're really going through, there's nothing wrong with touching on some, some going back in time, some you know uh, reflecting. Mm -hmm. but if you want to stay relevant and keep it moving, you got to talk about what's going on right now. Also, too, I feel like every song we write or we record, it gets better and better and better. Oh, you know awesome. what I'm saying? So it's like. That's our evolution. Okay. It's evolved. Uh, it's 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 an ongoing process. Right. And that, I think that's every artist. I don't right. think many artists are doing this. I mean, I my advice is stay away from like you know things that will inhibit you from being successful, like hanging around the wrong people or you know those uh, you know getting heavy into drugs. You know, experimentation. You're an artist. That's okay. Right. 
getting heavy into anything, like make music your main priority. Right. But that's what it's helped us evolve, okay. and our sound definitely has evolved right. tenfold since okay. we started. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think so. Um, especially with like changing of members, because we've had uh, our drummer that we have now is, an, is a different drummer than we were who we were working with before. So over the time, I think with uh, those switches. Yeah. And right. just as you as you play more together as a group, I think we're because we're still like I guess relatively new, but we're still you know just uh, you know finding our sound, right? Finding kind of uh, what we right. like playing, right? And so that's kind of I think we're getting closer and closer to there. And so you know just as time goes on, our, our sound just gets more you know yeah. closer to what we kind of really aspire. And now it's just another member it's joining us, all right. the guitarist. Sure, it's punk. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Question four, which local Denver music besides yours would you recommend for people interested in the region? Um, Mainland Break is a band that I'm actually going to see tonight after this. They're really good. Um, and then, I don't know how active Slow Caves is anymore, but they're another favorite for sure. So, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you take this and she's got here. <laughs> um, I love Shadow Work. I think Shadow Work has a lot of great, mm -hmm. great music out there right now. Um, they're super interesting to watch, especially if you're into the psych rock uh, genre or like the groove rock. Mm -hmm. Really good. Katie Oaks is great, just rock and roll. And then uh, Iskali is a great lion rock and roll band too. They're, they've they been around forever. Um, I remember seeing some of their adverts for like the Budweiser partnership with the Broncos and I was like, oh, oh that's right. badass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and our drummer is, is, in addition to this band, he's also another band called VCO. They're mm -hmm. also really good. Check them yeah, out. Really there's good. also just there's a lot of really good bands in, in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I think the music scene is definitely like on the up and up. So that's, that's always exciting. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much said it all. Uh, for me, that's a no-brainer. I won't shout them all out so I can leave some for my man. Right, but definitely my cousins, uh, they got a band. They were featured on Local 303. Um, the uh, orig the original Eels, oh. the OG Eels, straight out of Denver, right? Oh. Fantastic band. Yeah. That, that that trio right there is just amazing. So, so that'd be definitely my shout out. And uh, Symes Carter, Symes Carter, all day. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to Troy Good. Swizzy B, MIG, oh, some old school guys, uh, MIG, Crook, uh, Asset One, um, definitely got to give love to Q Burst, Fan Base, Dank One, Dank One, DJ Il Naughty, Playa IKE. Those are kind of some older cats, but right. the newer cats too, man. I got love for everybody out here, man. It's, it's all love. I was okay. born in Inglewood, so. Uh, all right. Fort Collins raised in Inglewood. Oh, nice. Um, I feel like Denver's definitely having a renaissance in terms of rock music. Um, for a while there was a lot of, you know, dream pop kind of stuff coming out of here, and that's cool. And, and folk music's always been a big deal here in Denver. Yeah. Definitely the, the rock renaissance for me has been with bands like Citra, um, definitely a lot of other Latino bands that are come up and coming or have been around for some time now that are still making noise, like Los Mocochetes, uh, Pink Hawks, uh, El Cro, it's been around for a long time, so yeah. Well, um, all of the local 303 this month is super great, but would highly recommend um, Immigrant's Child, as well as uh, Fruta Brutal. Um, he just released a new single called Cultura Vampira. Ritmo Cascabel, they're super awesome and really great. Um, and Julian Street Nightmare, they super rock. Okay. Question five, what do you think the popular sound of the future will be? Um, I think it's just gonna be remixes of songs. <laughs> yeah. It's TikTok, it's ever like everything, uh, it's like two songs put together and... <laughs> yeah, I always think that like computer-based music is like, I mean it's already really popular but I feel like it's, I feel like it's evolving and I feel like mm -hmm. once it reaches that kind of like new kind of like echelon, like it's just gonna take over, but uh -huh. I think that's kind of where everything's heading. I've been watching the cyberpunk anime and playing cyberpunk, so uh, like, and it's just a blend of everything, and it's like EDM, it's yeah. classic rock, it's hard guitars, it's trumpets, it's everything, so I'm like, it's gonna be a mishmash of all these genres, and it's gonna sound great, so. It's gonna be a uh, cyberpunk tinge, you'd say? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. I think that we're hearing a lot more, like, when it comes to pop music incorporations of experimentation not just uh -huh. like with digital sounds but also with instrumentation I hope that they'll continue to be a hybrid of that and I think it's been fun to also hear how people are mixing genres in single songs like right. in new metal or like 
new wave, like new wave. There's just an integration and a mixture of, of different sounds. Mm -hmm. So I like that the rigidity of genres is starting to blend together. So your argument would be that in the future, genres will kind of mesh more together. Yeah, I feel like we're seeing that. I see it going. If, if history is true to its form, it, 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 it's, it cycles itself, right? Right. And I feel like we're in this 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 state of hip hop, well, and that's you know we're speaking to hip hop, but music in general, we're in this state where it kind of got really really evolved and, and real digital, and now it's kind of having this transition this transition back to almost an analog type feel. So so like what we like to say is is is, is we make music for 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 a synthetic world right we're making real music for a synthetic world okay but, but we really want to stay true to that retro vibe right like futuristic lyrics but a retro feel i think that there's going to be djs behind machines they're going to be playing on this way um, i don't know man you know i don't know where the future of music is going it's going to go where it goes because it's music i really think the written word's going to come back um, a lot of auto-tune has been going on a lot right. of like mumbling which is okay too but i really feel the real boom bap hip-hop's gonna come back also too it's gonna be a lot of techno uh, my man here with the synth it's gonna be a lot of synth a lot of techno uh -huh. uh, emd I, I my, my, my kids are heavy into the rave scene right now yeah, so right and that's evolved. gonna all intertwine that's evolved you, right you, you mean uh you mean edm edm, EDM yeah. My yeah. Man, yeah you can tell here i go pops right pops <laughs> right but yeah man yeah. i mean and just, I'm, I'm excited where it's gonna go you know and uh, we're going to be a part of it in limited data 2022. That is a very good question. Um, I think that, I mean, we're seeing, you know, the hyper pop thing is big, and I think that'll kind of like hyper pop. more and more mainstream. Um, yeah. But who knows? I think that there's going to be some cyclical, like, going back to some nostalgic sounds again. What do you think of hyper pop? I lo so I really like some bands that do it. I think other people that do it are attempting to get in on something that's popular and not necessarily coming from the same ethos. You'd say it, it can be done poorly, but there are quite a few that, that uh, really yeah, nail it. That's what I would say, yeah. Well, I think uh, due to the fact that the internet, you know, you can access pretty much anything at this point, um, at any time, any music is on call basically through streaming um, services. I would say that, you know, the, the trend, at least for us, uh, recently has been to like di diversify our catalog. We have our newest album has like starts off with like a heavy rock song, then it goes like into a indie pop song, then it goes into a cumbia, mm -hmm. and salsa. So just to have that diversity and ability to mold yourself organically and obviously authentically into a variety of different spaces, I think that's going to be the way that things are going because people's attention span is very small nowadays they want to keep you, keep hitting them yeah, with something new exactly not only is the attention span smaller but um people's ability to digest a variety of music uh and genres has gotten better so it's not like before where i felt like there was pockets of styles of music that people would like now people feel like dancing on one night and going latin dancing or going to electronic edm music dancing the next day they want to hit a punk show and so that's definitely cool and i think that's something that that will be trending moving forward <laughs> very interesting answers here's your free cassette tape cool, thank you there you go here's your free cassette tape there you go check it out it's uh it's a good cassette tape. Here's your free cassette tape. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Here's your free mixtape. Cool, thanks so much. Thank you for your answers. Those are very interesting. And here is your free cassette tape. Oh, there you go. go. All right, people, wasn't that something? I'm not kidding when I say that Denver has more talent than it knows what to do with, and some spectacular bands putting out some spectacular output. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go down to the description and check them out. I've linked some of my favorite songs from each of them. And until next time, this has been yet another installment of the exciting little program I like to call Asking Interesting Questions. 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 Asking interesting questions.